Hello everyone, let's do a solution to the homework problem in two different ways. First, without any electronics, and then with Desmos. Alright, so here was the problem. The problem was we had this curve here, f was 6 minus x squared, and we were going to choose a point at some x coordinate w, so that point is now at w, 6 minus w squared, and that point has a tangent line, on the curve. And we were considering the area of this entire triangle formed by that tangent line and the axes. Um, and then the question was about what, what w value is going to minimize the area of the triangle. So let's write down everything we know. Um, the equation for the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. So that's base, that's height. Um, because the triangle is formed by this tangent line, it's probably a good idea to write the equation for the tangent line. Um, and that tangent line is a function of w. Because if we move w around, that's what's going to move the, the line around. All right, so let's start out by writing our equation for the tangent line. So remember, um, we can use point-slope form. So y minus some y-coordinate equals slope times x minus some x-coordinate. So we just got to figure out what to plug in here. We know our y-coordinate and our x-coordinate already. Our x-coordinate is w. Our y-coordinate is 6 minus w squared. The slope we can find by taking the derivative. So f prime is negative 2x. But it would be a mistake to plug in negative 2x here. Because notice, then we'd have an x-squared overall on this right hand side and it wouldn't be a line anymore because remember when we say the slope we're actually talking about what is the slope right at this point so we want to evaluate the derivative when x equals w because we want a very specific slope that's a number so the slope is then going to be negative 2w so let's plug all that in All right, so that's our equation for L. <coughs> Excuse me. So now that we have this equation, how are we going to find the base and the height? Well, it seems like the base is the same thing as the x-intercept, and the height is the same thing as the y-intercept. So let's figure those out. So the x-intercept is what we get when y equals 0. So I'm going to plug in 0 for y, and then I'm going to solve for x. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by 2w. And then that gives me x minus w. So x equals w plus 6 minus w squared over 2w. Um, and I like to combine these under the same denominator because I think that's going to make simplification easier later. So let's multiply on the top and bottom by 2w. Okay, so do we agree this is the same thing as w? Think about canceling. Yep, that seems good. So now we'll combine them, and we get that x, well, rather the x-intercept, which is the same thing as this base value, is, let's see, 2w squared minus w squared, so that's 1w squared plus 6 over 2w. All right, so that looks pretty good. So now let's go ahead and find the y-intercept. I hope I can do it without running out of space here. So the y-intercept is what happens when x is 0. So y minus 6 minus w squared equals negative 2w. x is 0, so that's just negative w. So this right-hand side, the negatives cancel, and 2w times w is the same thing as 2w squared. So now I'll just add this whole term. So I've got y equals uh, 6 minus w squared plus 2w squared, which is the same thing as uh, 6 plus w squared. Cool. Okay, so now let's put all this together um, for the area equation. So I know that the area is 1 half base times height. So the base is w squared plus 6 over 2w. The height is 6 plus w squared. 
And something I'm noticing is w squared plus 6 is the same thing as 6 plus w squared. So really, we can rewrite this as uh, w squared plus 6 squared over 4 w's. Because the 2 and the 2 got multiplied together in the denominator here. This term got multiplied by that term to become that thing squared. All right, so that seems like a pretty simple form. We should feel happy about that. So now let's go ahead, so that's the area of the triangle. So now we want to minimize the area of the triangle. So we can do all of that optimization stuff we've been doing. Uh, to minimize the area, we'll find the derivative of area, and then look for places where the derivative is going, let's see, we're minimizing, so that must mean the derivative goes from negative to positive, because if the if a prime is going from negative to positive, that must mean that a is going from decreasing to increasing. So in the middle there, we would have a minimum. So that's what we're trying to do. All right, so let's take the derivative of a. OK, ah, this feels so good. All right, so derivative of a. So we got a couple of choices here. We could use the quotient rule. That feels like it might be ugly. We could multiply the top out and divide everything by 4w term by term. That might be nice, because then we'll just have uh, a bunch of terms that we can use the power rule on. That seems promising. A different thing we could do is multiply both sides by 4w and then do implicit differentiation on both sides. So any of these strategies should work. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and multiply out the top and then divide, because I think that's going to come out the cleanest. So if I multiply out the top, I've got w to the fourth plus 12w squared plus 36 divided by 4w, which is the same thing as w cubed over 4 plus 3w plus 9 over w. OK, so that's, that's not so bad. So now it's going to be easy to take the derivative term by term. So the derivative, the 3 will come back down. So I'll we'll have 3 fourths w squared plus 3 minus 9 over w squared. Because remember, this was the same thing as 9 times w to the negative 1. So the negative 1 comes down and becomes negative 2. And you get that. All right, so far so good. So the critical values are when a prime does not exist or when a prime equals 0. So a prime doesn't exist if w equals 0. Um, and that's not a problem, because if you think about the original situation, it's very obvious that w should not equal 0, because then we don't even have a triangle. OK, so let's solve for when a prime equals 0. In that case, we've got 0 equals all this business. Let's go ahead and multiply through by the w squared. Seems good. And now we're in a situation where this looks like a quadratic in w squared. So for example, if p was equal to w squared and we rewrote this, we would get 3 fourths p squared plus 3p minus 9. So now we're really in the home stretch here. Um, you could. I mean, you could try to factor this. If you wanted to use the quadratic formula, you could use that. If you wanted to complete the square, you could do that. Um, I think factoring is going to be nice. So let's factor out 3 fourths. So this term divided by 3 fourths is just p squared. 3p divided by 3 fourths is, so like, let's think about it over here. So 3p divided by 3 fourths is the same as uh, 4 times 3, 4 thirds times 3p, so the 3's cancel, so you just get uh, 4p. And then if you think about 9 divided by 3 fourths, again, that's 4 thirds times 9, so this cancels, giving you 3, and that's 12. So that should be a minus 12. And then you can just double check. It's easy to do this wrong when you do it in your head, so uh, just double check by multiplying out again. So we should get 3 fourths p squared. And then when you multiply here, the 4's cancel, and you get 3p. So that works. And then when you multiply here, 12 cancels with 4 to give you 3. And then 3 times 3 is 9. So that's, that's all worked out. OK, cool. And now. Um, well, of course, we could divide both sides by 3 fourths because the other side's 0. So now we're just factoring this guy. 
And this looks like it factors quite nicely as, uh, what's it gonna be? It's gonna be plus six minus two, right? Because it's uh, negative 12, and then when you add them, you get plus four. Cool, so that gives us that P is either two or P is negative six. Okay, well remember what P was. P was W squared. So W squared must be positive. So W squared can't possibly be equal to negative six. So that's not an answer. So that means uh, P must be two, which is W squared. So W equals plus or minus root two. And if you remember the original problem, W can't be negative. So that means W must equal positive root two. And we're done. We've found the minimum value. Okay. Before I show you a nice way to solve this on Desmos, let's just go backwards um, and see what if we'd done a different strategy up here other than multiplying out so that we could do it this way. So I don't like the quotient rule, so I'm gonna do something else. I'm gonna multiply both sides by four W. So now I'll have four W A equals W squared plus six squared. And I'm gonna take the implicit derivative. So on this side, we need the product rule. So I'll have 4a plus 4w a prime. And on this side, I'll use the chain rule. So 2w squared plus 6 times the derivative of the inside is 2w. So that's 4w w squared plus 6. All right, let's subtract the 4a. Um, and I'll, I'll substitute back in what a is equal to. So that's w squared plus 6 squared over 4w. So that's nice because the 4s cancel. And that's still 4w a prime. So now let's divide both sides by 4w. So that's super nice because this 4w cancels that 4w. So we've got w squared plus 6. And now we've got minus w squared plus 6 squared divided by 4w squared. OK, well, that's not so bad. So let's try and solve this one now and see if it comes out any nicer. So same thing, um, a prime does not exist when w equals zero, but as we said before, that's not a possible situation. So let's set a prime equal to zero and solve. So I could take this entire term and add it to the other side. So then I'd have w squared plus six squared over four w squared equals w squared plus six. And before I start multiplying through and so forth, um, let's just notice I've got blob squared divided by thing equals that same blob. So since I've got the same thing on both sides, it kind of makes sense to divide through by that thing. Um, and the only thing you have to pay attention to when you're dividing by something that's, that's not a number is, is it possible that the thing that you're dividing by could be equal to zero? Because remember, you can't divide by zero. So let's think, is this equal to zero? Um, but the answer is it could never be equal to zero because that would require w squared to be equal to negative six, and we know that can't happen. So that means it's safe to divide through. So I'm dividing both sides by w squared plus six, and that gives me w squared plus six over four w squared equals one. Oh, so keen. Now it's really working. So let's multiply through. 4w squared, so now I'll subtract the w squared from either side, so now that's 3w squareds. I'll divide by three on both sides, so that's two equals w squared. And so that gives me that w equals plus or minus root two again. So same thing I got before. This one feels a little bit nicer to me, um, but either way should be fine. All right, so come back in a second and I'll show you how to set up Desmos and maybe Maybe learning how to do this thing with Desmos is actually more important than being the master of all of this algebraic stuff. Um, so yeah, I think it should be fun.